Thank you so much. Thank you for supporting Ukraine. This victory is for every Ukrainian. Slava Ukraini! Well, the organizer of the Eurovision Song Contest, the European Broadcasting Union, likes to tell us that Eurovision is a non-political affair, but in Europe, we like to watch Eurovision for its politics. I'm Dr. Dean Vuletic. I'm the author of the first scholarly book on the history of Eurovision called Post-War Europe and the Eurovision Song Contest. We like to see the political issues that are articulated in the songs, whether ex explicitly or implicitly. This is, in the end, a show of international relations because the entries represent countries. I think we need to recall that this is Europe's biggest election. In no other election in Europe do so many countries participate. And in some countries, we could argue that this is uh, their freest vote. The Eurovision Song Contest was started in 1956. It was started as an experiment in the nascent technology of television. Basically, television officials from across Western Europe wanted to see if they could broadcast simultaneously and live across Western Europe. I think the first political message that was uh, sent through Eurovision was actually in the first Eurovision in 1956 when West Germany sent uh, a singer, Walter Andreas Schwarz, who was a Jew and a Holocaust survivor. So this was already a strong statement from West Germany that it had distanced itself from Germany's Nazi past. The first big diplomatic explosion that occurred in Eurovision was in the mid-1970s when uh, Greece and Turkey boycotted each other's entries due to the Turkish invasion of Cyprus. In 1976, for example, Greece sent a song which was about the Turkish invasion of Cyprus and uh, the suffering of Greek refugees. So this year, the biggest political topic is the war in Ukraine. There are several entries that do um, address this issue. Perhaps the most eye-catching is the performance uh, by the Croatian group Let Tri. It's a song which criticizes Putin and Lukashenko. It's in a rock opera style. And it's perhaps not surprising that such a song should come from Croatia, which is the European Union member state that has had the most recent experience of war. There are also a lot of songs that deal with toxic relationships, with mental health issues, anxiety, panic attacks. This is uh, something I've noted in Eurovision increasingly since the COVID-19 pandemic. The stereotype of Eurovision has historically been that the songs are silly, but um, actually I think we're seeing more and more in recent years that the songs in Eurovision are engaging more directly with political and social uh, messages and that they're seeking to really capture the attention of the international audience by um, being relatable, by dealing with such universal issues.